The first two Godfather movies are widely acknowledged to be among the greatest American films of all time. The video game Godfather, on the other hand, was just an above average license game. Still, even coming close to living up to the Godfather name is an impressive achievement, and EA hopes to do it again with The Godfather 2. You'll still be doing mob dirty work in a wide open city, but this time, you have more responsibilities than shaking down businesses and busting heads. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new year, my friend. The start of a new future for the Corleone family. Salud. Congratulations, you've just been promoted to Dawn. After hightailing it out of Cuba, there's an opening in the family, and Michael Corleone has handpicked you, the player customizable guy named Dominic, to run the family business. I want you to be boss. Then I want you to have your own family. After a harrowing opening scene, you'll frequently deal with characters from the movie, such as Hyman Roth and the other Corleone brother, Fredo. The plot occasionally intersects with the film's storyline, but your own story focuses on deals and double crosses with other families and your conquest of New York City and Miami, Florida. Salud! Cheers! Salud! Dominic is a likable guy, and there are some smart plot twists. The writing is solid, but not quite movie quality. It's over between me and Carmine. I want him dead. <laughs> You'll drive freely around cities, take on missions, and perpetrate one violent crime after another, but Godfather 2 offers a new perspective you won't find in a standard Grand Theft Auto clone. The Dawn's View is a color-coded map showing who owns what, how much money each racket is making, how many guards are protecting each business, people you'll want to whack, and more. Completing story missions will open up new areas and options, but the plan of attack is entirely up to you. The game isn't overly hardcore or realistic, but the strategic element really defines the game. You'll start off in New York, but you'll soon move to Florida as well, fighting for control on multiple fronts. Neither city feels massive on its own. With a few forays into Havana, Cuba thrown in, the game has an impressive scope. Constant attacks by your rivals can sometimes have you obsessively flipping between the action and strategy screens in the heat of a firefight, but in general, there's a good balance between planning and execution. Think you can muscle in on my racket? Fuck you! The length of the single-player game is highly variable, since anything you can take away from your enemies can be taken right back, and a lot of the content is optional, but you can expect around 20 hours of hard work before you're running the country. Players looking to extend their business ventures online can also hit up the game's spread of multiplayer modes, with mob-themed match types like the resource-focused Safecracker and the base-destroying Firestarter. Gunning down rival mobsters can be fun in itself, but the real draw here is the integration of the Dawn element, which pops up as a real-time strategy-style interface reminiscent of Dawn's view. Players shouldering Dawn responsibilities can assign waypoints, mark targets for the kill, and even trigger vital control nodes that can either bestow your family with goodies or provide punishing results. The bird's-eye lens of a Dawn is certainly a unique departure from playing Grunt out on the battlefield but with tense do-or-die situations and hectic 16-player action occurring in real time, you'll look forward to sitting in the big boy's chair. Whether you're a soldier or a Don, cash and upgrades won online carry over to the offline game and vice versa. So there's a good incentive to enjoy both. Dominic, welcome back. Just because you're a Don doesn't mean you have to sit in a chair stroking a cat all day. Dominic takes a hands-on approach to his mob empire, getting out in the field with up to three of his most trusted associates and personally negotiating important business transactions. The kind where you beat the crap out of people. The shooting has a good feel, with an easy-to-use lock-on system and weapons that sound and feel powerful. The designated driver position would seem to be beneath the Don, but Dominic gets around well despite occasionally wonky handling on the less sporty vehicles. Finally, strangling wise guys by tightly gripping your controller is as entertaining as it was in the last game. This isn't happening. Help! You come close to being a one-man army yourself, but your crew members are absolutely essential. You can send your men to attack, defend, or add them to your crew. Up to three of your underlings can provide solid backup in firefights, as well as lend their special talents like demolitions or safe cracking to the mission at hand. You'll be able to hire new recruits and fill out your family as you go along, spending cash to upgrade both your character and your crew with better stats and useful abilities. When you're not seeking the guidance of movie characters or shooting your way through story missions, primary goals are to take over businesses and run rival families out of town. Once you've shut down all their operations, you can storm each family's compound for a chance to get rid of them once and for all with a well-placed demo charge. 
Many missions are completely optional, but they directly benefit your business. For example, made men from other organizations constantly harass your businesses, but you can unlock the secret kill condition that lets you take them out of the game permanently. On the other hand, if you feel like one of your own men isn't pulling his weight, you can mark him for death and make room on your roster for someone who's a little more capable. Pretty much everything you do as Don gives you an added edge over the competition, but controlling entire crime rings is the most important. Each type of business has its own perk. Maintain control of all four diamond smuggling operations, and you'll have bulletproof vests for the entire family, while running chop shops gets you access to armored cars. The more monopolies you maintain, the more powerful your family becomes, giving you a real feeling of momentum as you progress through the game. It's not stealing if they stole it from me in the first place, right? Wanna get your yayas out? Yes. Godfather 2 does a good job nailing the late 50s, early 60s look. When it comes to technical muscle, it doesn't quite measure up to 2009. While everything is functional, particularly the well-presented 3D Don's View map, the game looks pretty modest overall. Fire effects and explosions are nice, but everything else looks a bit simple and plain. You may hope for a little more visually, but the audio won't let you down. Listen to me! You fucking pay attention! Whether it's random quips from your crew or solidly delivered story monologues, the game is an authentic sound that's easy to appreciate. Ain't that Rot's game? And La Vegana? Junk? Dope? I want them dead! Frank! We're trying to protect this country from communist dominance. You can be a part of that. Godfather 2 isn't an achievement on par with its movie counterpart, and the chaos and random hilarity that come with the sandbox game don't really reflect the serious subject matter. But that's not to say the game doesn't tell an interesting story. Godfather 2 deserves props for its sandbox-style action and enjoyable strategic management. The slightly dull visuals are regrettable, but they shouldn't put off interested players. If you'd rather call the shots than jump through hoops, this unique game is your kind of racket. Damn, baby, look at you. That ass, those tits. You are on fire.